you need to add extended functionality to your app and that you didn't find a suitable plugin in the plugins uh, marketplace in Bubble, you also ha have the solution to install the API connector so you can define your own API calls uh, directly in the Bubble editor and it will allow you to really be super fle flexible and to connect to whatever tool uh, which has an API. So I'll show you how to do it. If you don't know what an API is, don't be scared. Uh, it is pretty simple. Uh, API stands for Application Programming Interface, but it really only means that it is something that allows you to connect two applications together. So if you want another tool to send information to Bubble, or if you want Bubble to send information to another tool, an API is what you're looking for. In this example, I'll show you how to connect to Jiffy. So for those of you who don't know what Jiffy is, uh, Jiffy is a GIF generator. So what we'll do here uh, is that we'll connect it to Bubble and to make sure our own app user will be able to type a word here, to press enter and to get um, GIF from Jiffy related to uh, his input. So to add your API, to add a new API, uh, you need to go in plugins and to have the API connector plugin installed. It is free and it is uh, very quick to install. So you just need to install this API connector and next you need to click on add another API. And when you click on it, uh, you will see API name, new API. So let's name it. Uh, here we want to connect it to Jiffy. Uh, I will just put school because I've already created it. And uh, next, um, so it, seem, it can seem a little bit intimidating at first, but once you have understood the basic principles, it will be much easier. Um, so for any um, uh, API you want to add, uh, my number one advice would be uh, look for the API documentation on the tool you'd like to connect with. So uh, for Jiffy, uh, let, I started by, to, I typed Jiffy developers, but it could be like a Jiffy API documentation. So uh, let's click on it. Okay, now we are on the Jiffy developers website and let's click on get started. So um, whenever you try to connect an, um, a tool to Bubble, you should uh, look for uh, the API quick start guide or for uh, let's start like something like this, uh, because um, you need to follow like basically everything that's going to, to be told in the documentation in order to be able to create it on Bubble. So here, uh, in the quick start, it says that we need first to create a Jiffy API key and so that we need to create an app first on the developer dashboard and that we need to create an account first. Uh, so let's do just this. Uh, so let's click on create an app. So an app is just basically uh, going like on Jiffy creating an app will allow you to give you basically something like an ID and a password and uh, that you are going to uh, input in Bubble and basically it means that you are allowed to use this information. It is a bit like a, like a password. Uh, so I already created an account but if you did not yet you can like just create an account and uh, then create an app, it's really easy. So here I'm going to create an app. I've already created one, but I'll show you how to do it. So uh, just select API, next step. And now let's put test school, uh, learning. Okay, create app.
Okay, so uh, this is your API key. So you should, um, okay, no, this is the one I just created, test school. So you just should copy it and then go back uh, to your Bubble app. We are back in the Bubble editor. So we have uh, chosen a name and now we need to choose um, an authentication method. Um, I'll include a link below uh, for you to know when to use each uh, authentication method. But for now, we'll choose a private key in the URL because uh, Jiffy uh, gave us uh, an API key. Um, as for the key name, we need to, to check in Jiffy documentation uh, how the key should be called. So I went back uh, to the documentation and uh, what we'd like to do uh, is to do a search uh, API call uh, because basically uh, we want uh, someone to search for GIF um, on Jiffy. And here uh, you need to like look a little bit at everything. It might seem intimidating. But here uh, we can see uh, your API key, uh, Jiffy API key, and here you can see a name. So you need to copy and paste it. Uh, don't take uh, the two points, just take uh, the API key. So you copy it and you are going to paste it uh, as a key name. And uh, you need to take the key value, so let's back Let's go back to um, our app and you need to take the app API key here. Copy and paste it here. Uh, we don't need a develop development key value for now. Um, we it would be useful if you'd have if you'd like to have a different um, key in your development app and in your live app. Now that we have added the key value, uh, we want to add a call. So when you create uh, an API in the API connector, you automatically uh, have a call which is created. So let's click on expand and we'll change the name. So here, uh, let's call it search because as I told you before, uh, we want to create something which allow people to search for GIFs. So let's create, call it search. Okay, let's fill all the fields of this API call. Um, we changed the name already and now we need to decide how we want to use it. You can choose between uh, data and action. If you are unsure uh, what to choose, uh, I suggest you to hover um, on the elements and you'll see a help box appear and you can click on it. And as you can see here, uh, you will know the definition. So let's read it together. Uh, data calls appear in the get data from an external API dropdown menu and action calls appear in the plugin section of the actions dropdown menu. Uh, it's a little bit mysterious, but basically uh, you want to choose data when you need to um, display data from an external tool uh, in your app. So if you want to use it in the design part and display data. And you choose action if you want um, to use uh, your API call uh, in your workflow to trigger, for example, an action. Not to trigger an action, but to be an action. Uh, so here, we want to use it uh, as a data. So I choose data. And, oh, sorry. And next, um, I need to choose what the API call uh, will do. Uh, the most common uh, are get and post. Get uh, is used to retrieve data from an external tool and POST is used to send um, data from Bubble to an external tool. Uh, for the other actions, I will uh, include uh, the information uh, below. 
Uh, so let's choose get. And here we need um, to include a URL and we need to go back in our API documentation to find this URL. So um, I am in the search endpoint part of the documentation because we want to do a search. And here I can see a GIF URL. Uh, here it's sticker, but uh, we want to have uh, GIFs. So I just copy and paste it. And there is an important thing you need to do before uh, moving on is to include uh, HTTPS here. So HTTPS dot and sometimes it's annoying because you need to type uh, each letter individually. Okay, if you don't include each HTTPS at the beginning, it won't work. Uh, perfect. Um, now let's see what we need to do next. Okay, so we can see uh, that we need to include some parameters. Um, there is the API key, but we've already um, included it here, so we don't need to uh, put it again as a parameter. And here I can see that there is a um, Q uh, parameter that is required. So let's copy it and uh, I just add parameter and I paste it. And as you can see, um, so this parameters, this parameter, sorry, is used to search the query term or phrase. Um, so basically, it will be the parameter which will take the user, uh, like the value the user will type. Uh, you you need to uh, choose an initial value for it. Uh, it's cheeseburgers here, but really it could be anything. It has no importance. Like I could put lamp insta instead of cheeseburger. Uh, it would be the same, for example. Um, okay, uh, the other parameters are not required, but maybe we want to include uh, this one because this parameter tells the maximum number of objects to return. And it can be nice to avoid um, the app to be too slow to load. So uh, let's add this limit. Limit. And for value, it really doesn't matter, but let's put 10. And now you need to decide um, if these parameters are private or no. Uh, obviously, here it's not sensitive information, so we don't need to say it's private. And uh, only the second one is optional, the first one is not optional. Okay, uh, sounds good. Uh, let's uh, see if it works. And to see if it works, you need to click on initialize the call. Basically, what it will do is it will uh, just fire uh, the API call and see if uh, Bubble gets the information it is supposed to get from Jiffy. Perfect, so it worked. Uh, it tells us uh, all the data uh, which is generated from Jiffy. Uh, here there is a lot of data, uh, but so you don't need to worry about it. Um, there is only like one thing you need to modify here. You can see the type is a GIF and here uh, it is not some text, it is an image. So you need to choose image here. Uh, for the rest, uh, you don't need to, to worry about it. So uh, let's hit save. So now that your, um, your API call is, is, uh, is good to go, I'll show you how to use it in your app. So let's create the system which will allow the user to input a search term and to display uh, GIFs. Uh, so I created a new page and now I need to draw an input form uh, first. So let's center it horizontally. Um, I don't need to do much more here. It's just a simple input box. And next, um, I need to create a repeating group in order to display all my GIFs. 
Um, let's say I want two rows and five columns because I've defined the limit to uh, 10 GIFs. And now I need to decide um, what type of content I want to display. Um, here, you, there are lots of uh, type of content because I've used this uh, bubble app to create many things. But here, uh, there is something called search data, which has been created. Next, you need to choose your data source. Here, uh, it will be get data from an external API. And uh, you need to choose your API provider. Uh, here, it's Jiffy. Great. And um, now um, you will need to personalize this parameter because you don't want uh, your app to always uh, display lamp uh, GIFs. You want uh, your app to display uh, GIFs related to what has, been, uh, what has been inputted here. So you'll just, um, instead of lamp, you want to insert dynamic data and choose input a value. Uh, input a was the name of our input form. Uh, great, and uh, now you can see it's red, so it means there's something missing, so click on more, and uh, you are going to choose data. Obviously, like the other options uh, are not uh, what you want, you want uh, the data source to be the data. Perfect, uh, we are not done yet. We need to add an image to our repeating group to make sure uh, the GIFs will be displayed. So let's draw an image here. Let's make it like bigger, maybe the full size. Okay. And uh, we need to choose uh, insert dynamic data. And here, um, uh, like on the repeating group, the type of content is search data. So for the image here, you need to choose current cells search data. And here, uh, this is generated by Jiffy. So obviously you don't need to remember this if you will never use the Jiffy app, uh, but for um, like to have uh, the proper image, uh, we need to have like the downsized um, medium URL. Uh, great. Um, so now that this is done, uh, let's preview our app. And so we can see our inputs. Uh, let's enter uh, something here, maybe a cow. You will notice that here we have a uh, lamp uh, GIFs because uh, the lamp word was our initial call. But uh, I just typed cow and now I have very silly uh, cow GIFs. So it seems to work perfectly. Um, that was it for this example. Uh, I hope uh, it allowed you to understand better how uh, API call works. And I will include a video, a very cool bubble video uh, down below. Uh, this video really explain uh, very well how to set up more complex API calls. Uh, yeah, that's it for me.